So but can a, it penetrate a muscle? So infrared light at best probably penetrates three centimeters. Um, most data shows that like maybe five millimeters is kind of a red and then infrared start to hit, but maybe up to two, three. But think of it as like a lot of photons at the top of the skin and then only a few getting down deep. So that's why it's kind of the recipe. So again, the time is important because you could use a higher radiance for one minute you could lose a lower irradiance for a longer period of time and get the same dose. So it's kind of the analogy of like cooking a turkey. Do you go low and slow, or do you drop the thing in a boiling pot of water or, and fry the thing? Hmm. But is it the effect on the skeletal muscle, or is it the effect on other areas that then generate the help of the tissue? It's decreasing pain receptors. It's decreasing inflammation. Mm. It's decreasing swelling in the tissue. And it's potentially that swelling in the tissue, particularly around the nerves, that causes some of that delayed onset muscle soreness. And so this is why you potentially want to use it you know, after training. Now there is some debate on like, what is the perfect time after training? Because if you immediately run to the red light panel after you do you know, a strength training exercise, you, know, you might blunt that inflammatory adaptation you might not be a sore but you might not get as much hypertrophy if you use it immediately afterwards same stories like why you wouldn't do a cold plunge immediately after doing a strength training episode you know i've thought a lot about that and i would say to be fair the influence might be really small you know like i don't know if if someone if you're going to use red light i would it, from my perspective go ahead and do it i i don't think it's going to affect their I don't think it's big enough for most yeah. people to make a big deal. Like, you know, if you're an Olympic athlete, maybe you need to time it down to the minute. 